Hello, hello, and welcome to RuPaul's Drag Race Rejudged, where today, I will be taking a look at the best and worst casting choices on All-Star Seasons. Before I get into the actual video, I just want to say thank you all for 500 subscribers. I know this sounds really cliche, but I really never thought my channel would succeed, so thank you all. On that note, let's get into it. We will be starting with the 5 worst casting choices. First up, on UK vs. The World Season 1, we have Jujube. I love Jujube, and I really want her to get a season win. However, this was not her season to do it. I personally think this was her worst of her 4 seasons. I think All Stars 5 ended her storyline on honestly a really good note. She finally won a challenge, she finally made it past third place, it was all around a great showing for her, and then she came back and it just did not go well. Once again, she was in the bottom three times, all of them being generally deserved in this timeline. Her runways were a huge downgrade from her previous season. As much as I really wanted her to win because that would be incredibly, incredibly funny, this was just not her season. Now we have India Farah. She is the queen who turned all stars, in my opinion, into some stars. Every queen before this season had some justification to be on there. India had no justification to be on there other than getting picked up in a lip sync by another queen. Her runways were middle of the road at best. Her challenge performances outside of the talent show were all pretty awful. She didn't really have much to show. If it doesn't, if it's not clear, I don't really care for India Farah. Honestly, her most iconic moment of the season was lying to get Alexis eliminated, failing, but then also tanking Alexis's run on the season. It's, it's not, I don't know why she came back. It was not a good choice. Next up, we have Nacia Lopez on All Stars 8, and this is going to be based off her performance on the season, not the behind-the-scenes work that she did. If you were not aware, Nasha was the person who fought for the queens to get paid for their work on Untucked in the Fame Games, and while I love her for that, she did not really belong on the season based off Season 8. Nasha is honestly incredibly talented, it just doesn't translate to Drag Race for whatever reason, and this season was just further proof of that. She has yet to deliver us a single above average challenge performance. And I do not know why they brought her back. Next up we have Serena Chacha. Who on paper, on paper, sounds like a great casting choice. In execution, no. She was not a good casting choice, because production chose to do nothing with her. She was thrown in the bottom and eliminated, and that was pretty much it. Then she came back and immediately lost again. If they wanted to bring her back, they should have given her something to do other than go home first. I believe that Serena is a bad casting choice, not because of anything she did, she definitely deserved to come back, but she was a bad casting choice because she was cast in a way that set her up to fail. Finally, we have Mimi I'm First. How was Mimi I'm First on this season? I know there's that video of all the queens talking about all the people that should have been on instead of her, which is hilarious by the way, but why was she on here? Like, I get that she had the fight with Shangela, and I get that she broke the rules of the competition by lifting up India, but I do not know why that constitutes her coming back over the many, many people who got passed over for years. The only plus to her casting is that every time she is on, an iconic fight happens. However, that does not a good casting choice make. At least in my opinion. Next up, we have the five best casting choices, and now we are going to talk about Pangina Heels. Pangina and Jimbo 100% made that season what it was. 
Pangina coming onto All Stars to compete for her first time was an incredibly risky move by production, and it paid off 100%. I would argue that behind Jimbo, she was the fan favorite of the season. She was able to introduce herself to an entirely new group of fans because a shockingly low amount of people watched Thailand for how good it was. I think her runways were great, her performing skills were great, she all around just had a great showing, and her elimination is one of the most iconic moments ever in All-Stars. Next up, we have Mohart on All-Stars 4. This was an incredibly risky choice considering how recent Season 10 was at the time. However, once again, 100% paid off for production. Mohart had one of the fastest glow-ups we have ever seen. None of these looks would be even remotely within her wheelhouse for Season 10. Her fashion glowed up. She, her personality, which was great before, also glowed up. She got a lot more confident in what she was doing and could focus more on the challenges. While I don't think she had a massive impact on the storytelling of the season, it is still a great casting choice that helped make All-Stars 4 as good as it was. And even if you disagree with me that All-Stars 4 was a good season, I hope we can agree that it would have been worse if Mo was not a part of it. Next up, we have Alexis Michelle on All-Stars 8. This may be a weird one, but bear with me. Alexis Michelle, Lala Ree, Jessica Wilde, and Jimbo were my favorite parts of this season. I do not think the season would have been as entertaining had it not been for Alexis being Alexis. The backstabbing, the crying, the drama, it made incredible TV. I would argue that she was the single most entertaining person on this season. I know that is controversial and a lot of people will disagree, but I stand by that. Alexis Michelle is a very acquired taste, and if you don't like her, you don't like her, but if you like her, she makes that season so much better. Next up, we have another massive risk that production took with Kylie Sonique Love on All Stars Season 6. I did not have any memory of Kylie other than the fact that she could do a lot of gymnastics when she lip synced. I did not watch the Hollisley Spectacular. I don't even think I was watching the show at that point, so Kylie really came out of nowhere for me, and I'm very happy about that. I know her win was controversial, but if you look at Season 2 Kylie versus All-Star 6 Kylie, it is another massive glow up. I think she is incredibly underrated as a performer and a queen, and I think if she got to come back for another All Winners, she would become even more of a fan favorite than she already is, and I think she would be able to prove why she won. Next up, we have Silky Nutmeg Ganache, the queen who took All Star 6 from, let's say, around an 8, 8.5 to an 11. Silky's Lip Sync Smackdown was one of the best episodes of Drag Race ever. I loved the shift from the returning challenge to it just being Silky succeeding. I think that is some great storytelling. I love Silky. I did not like her on Season 11, as was the case with a lot of people. That episode completely turned me around on her. I love her now. And I don't think this season would have been as good had it not been for her lip sync smackdown. You could definitely see that she had grown from season 11 in her early part on the season, but it wasn't until she came back that you, it really became clear that she was a force to be reckoned with. And I think she would have won Canada vs. the World had Raja not been there. Hey, it's Drag Race Rejudged. Do you want gay sh well then check out the RuPaul's Drag Race Rejudged YouTube channel and hit subscribe.